Hello, 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 holy moly. I am back from the dead. <laughs> uh, it is officially 8.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'm going to give it uh, a minute. We're going to officially start at 8.02, making sure the YouTube channel is receiving the content. That's what is, it's actually telling me receiving your content is green, it's starting, the stream is healthy. It's always a good thing. We're going to officially start at uh, 8.02. Super excited. So if you look at the title of today's stream, and it's 8.02 now, so let's just get it started, right? So if you saw the title on today's stream, uh, The Server Room, episode 42, I mean, it's been a while that I did a uh, I did a, uh, an episode with you guys. I've been so busy lately uh, updating, creating, uh, recording, editing, and uploading to the channel as much as I can. I just did not have time to push any uh, shows for you guys. And I finally have a day, which is today, this Friday, to push something out. Uh, so I'm doing a double feature. What what does that mean? Double feature is and we're going to do episode 42 today. If you saw the title, this, the title basically says uh, System Center Service Manager 2016 Step-by-Step -step Install and Configuration. Awesome. And then uh, I'm going to take about 30 minutes, 45-minute break once this uh, show is over. I got to set up for episode 43. And we're going to kick start it with that. Now, episode 43 is pretty awesome because we're going to be dealing with Windows 10 version 1803, which was released not too long ago. And we're going to be deploying it with SCCM. Booyah! So I know a lot of you might be excited about that. So make sure you catch episode 43. Okay. So today's episode is all about uh, configuring and installing the System Center Service Manager. Uh, let me switch the screen. A uh, couple announcements. Thank you so much, Lenovo, for hooking me up with the TD340. That is the server that I've been using for the past 40 something episodes. Uh, second quarter, my goal for subscribers is 50,000. I'm still trying to get those 50,000. Uh, I'm close, but uh, you never know. Uh, again, this is what we're going to be dealing today. Uh, I will share this Google Docs for you guys at the end of the show as well as the PowerPoint. And the reason why I do PowerPoint is because it's short, it's simple, it's straight to the point. Rather than me doing everything live with you guys, it's like watching paint dry. I don't want you guys to hang around for several, several minutes or an hour looking at, you know, SQL database installing. You see, you see the green bar going and going. Uh, you no. Know, why, right? So this is my experience of how I dealt with uh, the service manager installation, all the step-by-step, -step, okay? I think the PowerPoint slide is about 200 something slides. Uh, we will go over the basic stuff, like hopefully you guys know how to install a SQL database. We're gonna go through that real quick, installing the servers, features, and all that stuff that you need within the server. All that stuff is going to be done quickly, but when we get to the part of installing the service manager, we go a little slow, okay? But again, the PowerPoint stuff is there. Uh, within the Google Docs, I have a couple of links of what is uh, System Center Service Manager. This is for you, you know, for you guys to read. I'm not going to go over this stuff. Uh, service Manager is a great service desk kind of support system. Uh, this is the way that I used it in the past. The last time that I used Service Manager was on 2007. Uh, and my last job, they used it in a way of like a help desk ticketing system. Uh, you could use it more as, you know, you could do a little bit more with service manager. It's not really a ticketing system. You could do a lot more with servers and all that other stuff. Okay. Uh, again, I'm going to provide this link. You guys read it. I'm not going to go over that stuff. Now the requirements and topology, I do not have the hardcore equipment to run this as best practice because, <laughs> Uh, 16 gigs, eight cores, I, I just don't have. So what I did was I created two virtual machines and both virtual machines uh, has about, you know, eight gigs each. Uh, I installed Service Manager and on the, second, on the second machine, I installed the data warehouse. Now for small scenarios, these are the requirements here, depending on how many users or end users you're going to support. 
uh, medium, it gets a little crazy because medium is between 2,000 to 5,000 end users. This is when you need to separate your service manager, uh, separate your warehouse, data warehouse, and also separate your service, uh, your self-service portal. Now, the only thing that I'm not covering today is the self-service portal. I am covering the data warehouse and the service management server. Okay, those are the two things that I'm covering. Uh, you're probably saying to yourself, why you didn't go cheap like you normally do and just install everything in one machine? You can't do that because service manager, you're not able to install this service within an Active Directory. Okay, so it needs to be in its own box. You're probably saying to yourself, why not install data warehouse within service manager? Again, you can't. Uh, you try If you try to install the data warehouse within a machine that already has service manager, it's going to start yelling at you. So these two things need to be separate. Okay. And the last one is a crap load of best practice AD accounts that you need create to create. You know, you definitely need to SQL admin accounts, uh, a reporting account. There's a couple of other ones that you need. Um, t -t 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 right here, the system admin for the SQL role. Uh, management group for administrators, you definitely need to have that. Service manage, service account, workflow account if you're dealing with that. I think there's about five to six user accounts within Active Directory that you need to create and about two groups that you need to create as well. Okay, so this link will be provided within the Google Docs for you guys to just do your thing. Now, I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the live production, not the live production, but the, the virtual machine. Uh, I have my, this guy right here is my uh, system center service manager. This is the virtual machine right here. And I think I'm running everything. Let's see. I forgot what OS I'm running right now. So win BER. Yeah, I'm running everything on 2016. This is the version that I'm running it on 1607. Okay. And then my data warehouse management, which is this guy right here. I haven't loaded it up. Let me click on this and let me launch that guy up real quick. So this is the, just the data warehouse. This guy, uh, what it does is when you attach it to your service manager, it gives you two options. Now, within the PowerPoint, I don't show you the reporting, but eventually it shows up once you add your, your data warehouse. This takes forever to show up. This doesn't, the data warehouse part, but these two options only show up when you attach your, da your data warehouse server into your machine. I think if I go, let me see. Uh, okay, so yeah, so right here, this is your administration overview. This is the part right here, it says register with server, uh, service manager with data warehouse. This is what you click on. Again, I go over all this. Is, I'm going <laughs> I'm going to go over all this uh, during the PowerPoint, which I'm going to do right now. So let me just minimize this real quick for you guys. Boom. Start this PowerPoint and let's get started. All right. Again, this PowerPoint will be provided at the end of the show. Hopefully, if I remember, I put it at the end of the show. And uh, let me just switch the display real quick. Awesome. 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 Okay. So first things first that you need to do with your server is you need to install the roles and features, right? Uh, one of the features that you definitely need to install is the web server, okay? Uh, accept all the defaults with web server, okay? And then you also need to have .NET Framework 3.5 features installed within your server, okay? Those are the two things that you need within um, the server manager. You install it, all the basic, all the default, you don't need any... Uh, you know, you don't need anything special. All the default uh, roles and services for your web server will work with no issue. Okay, click on next. Uh, restart if you want. You don't really need to. I think I restarted my machine because uh, I like to restart my machine every time I install any particular feature or role. Install, done, complete. Now, the service manager files, I basically went into uh, the TechNet site and, you know, registered and I downloaded it. I'm able to use it for, I believe, 180 and 90, 90 days. So there's a crap load of them. And the one that you really need is the one that's called uh, SC2016 
SCSM. Let me see something real quick. I wonder if I'm able to zoom in. Uh, am I able to zoom in for you guys? Let's see. Do, do, do. I wonder if I'm able to zoom in for you guys. I want to see if I'm able to zoom in. I'm giving one sec. Let me start the zoom. Let me start the zoom in real quick. Awesome. Let's go back here. Okay. And come on. Let me switch real quick. Awesome. All right. So control. Yep. There it goes. So the one that you really need is this guy right here. This one. The other ones you don't really need. Uh, you might need the 86, which is the 32-bit version, is if your, you know, your Windows server is a 32-bit. Hopefully, you're not using a 32-bit operating system for a server. Everything should be 64-bit, okay? And then the the SQL version that I'm installing is 2016, okay? And uh, install SQL. 2016 very self-explanatory hopefully you guys know how to do this i think the only thing that i miss is to install or configure correlation uh, within your sql i think i'm saying that correctly there are particular settings that i will post within the powerpoint for you guys to configure it correctly i missed that step uh there there is going to be a couple of warning dialog box during the process of installing if you don't set up this particular thing within your sql installation Okay, I, I kind of messed up on that. But again, this is me doing it like raw. I'm downloading and double clicking on stuff and seeing what, what happens. And then I fix the problem. And then, you know, this is just me doing it like, like a noob mode, right? Just you're getting the files, you double clicking on setup and you're just following the prompts until something pops up and then you fix it. Now for SQL, hopefully you guys know how to install this. I just went installation, uh, a new standalone installation. Now, uh, I've had a couple people yell at me uh, at my YouTube channel stating, why a lot of people always do this? You know, everyone's always installing everything in one box. Why are you guys not doing it like the enterprise? There's no way in hell you're going to do this in the enterprise. Yeah, I understand that. You know, uh, at my nine to five job, I would never install SQL service manager in the same box. There's no way in hell. My SQL, my SQL server would be in its separate box with its own resources. But because this is a lab and I don't have a lot of resources, I take advantage of one virtual machine. I take advantage of that. Don't get me wrong, okay? Best practice is to create a server with SQL and then open up the ports, the correct ports, which would be 1433, so it's able to get income inbound traffic. That's the correct way to do it, right? But for me, I don't do that within my lab, okay? So I do apologize for not doing that for those individuals that are yelling at me. So from here, uh, you enter your product key, you accept the license and terms, click next. Uh, if you want, you could check, use uh, Microsoft updates, click next on that. It's going to start doing the setup files. Once that's complete, you get this right here. Uh, I have computer domain controller. Now, if you're an individual that's really quick and notice a lot of the slides, I started this process within uh, Azure and Azure gave me so many problems like holy crap I had to I had to move my implementation within my VMware because Azure does work with Hyper-V and it was just giving me so many problems so this is the reason why I got computer domain controller because again I was trying to install everything in one box I had active directory on this machine it was giving me problems okay this is the reason why I'm getting this but most likely you're not installing your SQL server and your service manager within your Active Directory is in a separate box. Uh, and the firewall configuration is basically because I didn't configure my, my inbound to do 1433, right? Click next on that. Uh, once you do that, the, there's a couple of services that you need to pick. And I basically learned trial and error during this process. I know it sucks because I didn't really know. And then when you, when you try to Google this, they don't really give you good information a lot of people like everywhere and it's, it's so outdated so what you need to do is you definitely need to have your database engine services as a given uh you i learned it i learned this the hard way you need full text 
you need to have uh, analytics services and you need reporting services. Now one, two, and three, I learned that the hard way when I was doing the installation part because all, the, all three of these guys are needed and if you don't have it, it's not going to work correctly. Okay, so make sure you have all, all these three, especially this one because this is your database. Then you could change the data, you could change the location. By default, it's the C drive. I dropped everything inside my D drive. Uh, click next, it's gonna do its thing. I left the default instance. Uh, from here, now this changes a little bit. Okay, this is because we're reporting reporting services and analytic services. You're gonna have more features here. Again, I was I was trying to get it to work with Hyper-V and it just didn't want to work. And eventually I just moved everything into my VMware infrastructure and I got everything work working, right? So make sure you configure all this with the correct password and also the correct account name, okay? Click next on that. Uh, for my lab, I like to do mixed mode and give it a uh, SA password and then you add your current user. You don't need to do this, uh, but I like to do this within my production. Click next on that, nice little summary, click install, process, everything is done, completed, close, done. Now, uh, with 2000, with this version 2016, it does not have the option to install the management tools. It's weird. Uh, so they have an option right here, install SQL Server Management Tools. You would think this would go inside the installation file or in, where, where the installation folders or files or wherever it's located and install it. No, it's going to take you to a website. So when you click on this guy, it opens up a link and it takes you to download the latest management studio, which is 17.6, right? So you install it, click on it. It's going to start downloading. This is it right here. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. So it's about 802 megabytes, almost a gig. And if you want to, if you like me, you like to keep everything nice and current, uh, I would say install this. And once that's completed and it's running, uh, also get the update upgrade package. Make sure it's nice and updated. Uh, once it's in, once it's finished downloading, you click on it. You're gonna get this nice little window. Click install. It's gonna start loading the packages. It's going to install everything that it needs. Once it's completed, you definitely need to restart your machine. So once it's restarted, you're good to go. Now. Once everything is done, I like to make sure SQL is running. I like to make sure my agent is running. Everything is green. Everything is healthy. So I normally go inside my start menu and I locate my management tool. I load, you know, my management studio, click on it, loads up. I log in and long and behold, you got a green check mark, which is great. And your server agent is green and running. That's one of the things I like to do once I install SQL. Just make sure that stuff is up and running. Now, next thing that you need to do is make sure the SQL Server reporting service is running. Now, this part, I am not a huge guru. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of reading, a lot of Googling. I did a lot of reading within TechNet uh, website uh, because I'm not familiar with uh, the service, the reporting services within SQL. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you guys I know what I'm talking about, right? But what I did was I went inside my start, I typed in reporting, and within reporting, uh, it says, I clicked on reporting services configuration manager. Now you're probably saying a huge shift, like, wait a minute, Bernardo, it was full screen. And all of a sudden I see that you're within VMware. Yes, this is what I'm saying. I converted over, my Hyper-V was giving me a, a crap load of problems. So that I had I had to move everything over to, um, to my VMware. So for my reporting, I just searched it. I clicked on this guy. And this loaded up. I I wanted to connect to my my instinct, which is my database, and click on next. And all I did was I just make sure this was running, that the report services was started. Okay, it should automatically start. If it doesn't, make sure you click on start. But it should already be running. And next thing I did was I went inside the web service URL, and this is my virtual directory, and. What I did was I just clicked on this link and make sure it's active. If this link is not active and you're having issues with this link, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna have a shitload of problems with um, the data warehouse. Oh my God, I had so many problems with this. And eventually I got it to work and I'm super happy. 
And uh, one of the processes is me making sure that this was running and working correctly. All right. So from here, I went to web portal URL. So we went to services and URL from here. This is another one that needs to make sure it's up and running. Uh, the results right here are going to be all green. Make sure they're all green. Okay. If something is red, fix it. Because if you have any issues here, if you have any issues within the portal URL, I'm going to zoom in for you guys. If you have any issues here and here, guarantee you're going to have a crap load of issues getting your data warehouse to work correctly. Okay. Now, next thing that you need to do is extract the service manage, uh, service manager files onto your server. Uh, because this exe file is not the installation file. You got to double click on it. Uh, you're going to get this nice little wizard, click on next, accept the license and terms, click on next and give it a path and it drops or it extracts everything that you need and finish and done. And then goes the folder. Now I think, uh, during my installation process, I think I relocated this guy within my D drive. Okay. Now it's time to do the installation. Yes. Installation is kind of easy. You know, I did have a lot of issues in the beginning, but the all the PowerPoints are basically the 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 version of me fixing everything. All right, <laughs> uh, click on setup, double click on setup. You're gonna get this. You're gonna have two options to install, and the one that you want is service manager, uh, service manager management server, service manager management server. Holy crap, that's crazy. <laughs> Uh, once you do that, you're going to get the product registration, uh, put your organization, put your name, put the product key. I am using the 180 day trial. So that's awesome. And I'm definitely going to be doing future videos for you guys dealing with, uh, management packs, installing management packs, uh, getting the self portal. So I have, I have a couple of more, I have close to a month and a half to push out more materials for you guys. So, uh, check this off. And then you accept the, the license and terms, and then you click on next. And then you could drop it on the C drive, or you could change it to whatever location you want. Okay. Now, missing requirements. Because, again, this is me double clicking on the setup and not doing my research before doing the installation. And a lot of us do this. All right. I'm guilty. I'm not perfect. All right. If you're watching me because you think I'm perfect, I am no way pe perfect. Trust me. So I like to just go in it. Just double click on it and see what happens. You never know. It might work 100%. But no, it did not work 100% for me. Uh, I received two problems. Uh, one problem is super easy because they give you a link to install it on the spot, which is the Microsoft Report Viewer. And the second one, you need to go inside. It's going to open up a web browser, and you need to locate the, the AMO, which is the Analytic Management Object. Now, these two things, when you're downloading it for your service manager, make sure you save it somewhere within your network, right? Because you're going to be needing these two plugins for your data warehouse, okay? Again, when you download it, Make a copy of them, drop them somewhere within your server or network or whatever, because you're going to, you're going to be needing these two, um, software for your data warehouse. Okay. So what I did was I clicked on install Microsoft report and this pops up super, super easy because it does it right there in one shot. Click on next, uh, accept the license terms, install is installing, blah, 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 and finish done. That's over complete. Now the next one, let me zoom out for you guys. The next one is when you click on this link, it's going to take you to this website and you need to download the 2014 feature pack. Now be careful. Feature pack is going to install a crap load, not install, but download a lot of stuff that you do not need. Okay. So from this webpage, what you want to do is when you click on download, okay, you're probably saying to yourself, which one, which one? Now the one that you need is this one right here. This is the one that you need. I'm zooming for you guys. This one. SQL ASAMO 64. Okay. If you do an 86, make sure you find the one that's 86. But the one that I needed is this one. Okay. You don't need all this. You only need this one. 
Okay. And boop. Uh, so once you check it off, you download it. It goes right here in the bottom, right here. I'm going to zoom in for you guys real quick. It's really small. It's only 4.1 megabytes. And once you're done, you want to click on it. And this is the wizard. Click on Next. Uh, accept the license and terms. Click on Next again. Install. And done. Really quick. Finish. Click on Finish. Now you can continue the installation of Service Manager. And then what you do is you want to definitely check again. And once you check again, you cross the fingers and boom, everything's green. The only warning that I receive is the following. Uh, the CPU processor does not meet the, recommend, uh, the recommendations. <laughs> My processor speed was only 2295 uh, megahertz. And they needed 2500. It's, it's, it's still going to install. You have to understand, Service Manager is a really heavy software really heavy so you definitely need to have a either a dedicated uh server or like really souped up your virtual machine if you're using a virtual machine within vmware hyper v make sure you have uh enough uh vcpus or and enough vram vram virtual ram <laughs> okay once you do all that click on next and boom, from here, you need to enter a valid database server. So I entered my valid database server, a local host. And this is what I was talking about. See, uh, using an unsupported correlation, including the default, blah, blah, blah. And see, this is where I made a boo-boo during my installation. And this is a warning, which is okay. It, it's still going to work, but you need to configure it. And the steps, I'm not going to go over the steps today, but I will provide it within the Google Docs for you guys, you know, you could do it correctly. And when you're doing it within your lab, you won't get this problem. I did local host because again, my database is local. Uh, SQL server port is 1433. And the size, I think I, I changed the size for a couple of them. Uh, by default, it gives you 2000 megabytes. I think I gave it 1000. Okay, this is going to be the database name. And then you need to give a management group. Now, this is a unique name for your server uh, service management, your server manager management group. Okay. And I just typed in, I just typed in BTNHD. And uh, within my Active Directory, I created a service manager admins group. Okay. Remember, you have to have a management group. That was one of the requirements with that link that I will provide um, you know, I will provide uh, for you guys at the end of the show within the Google Docs. Uh, there's a couple. I think there's two management groups that you need to create and uh, a couple of AD accounts that you need to create. This is one of them. Uh, now, again, this is like I was saying that this is one of those AD things. Uh, you need to have a service manager service uh, service manager services account. Uh, definitely don't use a local system account. Create a domain account add that information and you can't you can't click next until you test the credentials so once everything is green then you're able to click next then the next account that you need to create within ad would be your workflow account okay so that would be your service manager workflow account uh, you don't need don't pick local system account you want all these services to be um, you want, want all these services to use a different ad account Okay, that's definitely best practice. From here, again, it's the same thing as the previous um, uh, the previous dialog box. You need to test the credentials before you go to next. Click next, and then you have this right here. Click next on that. Uh, if you want Microsoft to keep it up to date, click on that. It's definitely recommended. And uh, you can also, by default, it's going to initiate a machine-wide automatic update. Uh, I think I unchecked this and I say do not, I don't want to use the Microsoft updates. So click next. Nice little summary of what's going to happen. Click install. And this process takes a bit. And once it's done, it's done. That's it. Okay. Uh, by default, it's going to open the encryption backup and restore wizard after the setup closes. <laughs> uh, this is up to you. This is, I, I, would, I would say this is a 100% must do if 
you are doing this within a production. If you're doing a lab, don't deal with it now. If you want to see it, what how it looks and feels, definitely leave it checked off. Click close so you can see how the wizard works with the backup and restore because it's definitely a good thing to have uh, a nice little backup of the system. Okay. Boom. Now we dealt with the servers, uh, service manager server part. Now it's time to get the data warehouse service manager. Jesus, Microsoft, these names. So I created another virtual machine and I called it VDWMS. Okay. Virtual data warehouse management server. What a name, right? <laughs> So from here, within my server, I just went inside my server. Like I created a share folder within my uh, system center service manager server. I created a folder and I shared out this particular folder. Uh, this right here has the installation stuff and I double clicked on it, clicked on run. And it's going to start doing the setup wizard, right? And like before we did this option and if you try to do this option within the service manager server, it's going to say, no, no, you can't do this. No, no. It's it's just going to like yell at you like, no, you can't install the data warehouse in the same server where your service management server is located or whatever, dude. <laughs> so click on that and you're going to get this wizard. This is really the same thing, right? Uh, if you have a license key, go for it. Enter a license key, enter your name, organization, whatever. Uh, I checked off to do the 180 trial and I checked off uh, the license to terms, clicked on next. From here, I by default, it's a C drive, but I told it to drop everything inside the D drive. And the next thing is missing requirements for the data warehouse management server. Yeah, because again, I learned that I learned the hard way. And this is why I told you guys in the very beginning, when you in, when you retrieve those the reporting viewer as well as the analytic service management object, holy crap, I remember that. Um, make sure you have a copy of that, right? Because boom, you're gonna see it again. So again, click on the link. Well, actually, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, this one installs a different one. Well. Yeah, you still need the viewer for this one, but this also needs a 2012 native client. So when you click on it, it takes you to this rather than having the rather than clicking download because you need to make sure you're picking the correct one because there's a lot of them. Uh, this one is like really far down from the web page and you definitely need to get this one. So download the 64 package or the 86. Hopefully you guys are doing it on 64 bit operating system. So click on that. Uh, save it, uh, save it on the downloads, and I open it up and install next. This is pretty self explanatory so it's just next, next, and accept the license and terms, and next again, and leave everything as the default, don't change anything. Next again, and install, and you're done, finish. Don't, don't really need to do much, just leave everything as the default. Now, next thing that we need to do is take care of this. This is definitely a file that I already had, but I didn't, you know, I learned my lesson the hard way. So I clicked here and, but I, you know, I already knew the name of it. So when I clicked on download, I went directly to that particular file, which is this guy right here. Click on next and no, check on it. Click on next, save it. And then you, you're able to run it. And once you run it, you know, again, next and then accept the license of terms and next again and install and then you're done so it's it's like i mean installing these installing these particular uh software that you need for it to run cor uh, correctly you don't need to do any tweaks or modifications just leave everything as the default and just click next 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 and finish right all right, so from here, uh, excuse me, guys. Now it is time to or continue the installation of our data warehouse. 
So we go back here. We check again. All green check marks. The only thing that I got a warning is the processor again. You need 2500, but the processor speed for this one was only 1895. And you definitely need four cores. I only had two cores. I'm kind of surprised that it, it let me let me install it. But I, I could tell you right now with the specs that I have on these machines, it is running extremely slow. But it's working. Click next and okay, so this right here, this is where the fun part starts. So you have three stages. So you have your staging and configuration, you have your repository, and you have your data mark, uh, mart. Okay. So from here you want to enter your database. Okay. So once you enter your database, again, you're gonna get this error. Do not worry because I'm gonna tell you guys how to fix that. So when you get to the part of installing SQL, you wouldn't have this problem. You won't have this problem, okay? Boom. So right here in the background on my service manager, you see right here in my firewall, inbound rule. I had to create a 1433 because if I don't have that inbound rule, to allow 1433 within my network, within my domain, this will not get green check marks. So you definitely need to have 1433 enabled, okay? And then do the same thing for that, okay? So these two right here, green, and then you have to enter again, okay? Into your uh, server, your server name, your database name. Press okay on that and green check mark. All green check marks are a good thing. Just got to make sure 1433 is, is opened up, uh, which was opened up on, see, right here, service manager. I had to create an inbound rule for this to work correctly. Okay. Now, boom. The next thing is you have additional data warehouse. This is more stuff that needs to be configured and you need access to your database server. So just enter your database server here. Again, you're going to get this uh, configure database warning. Just click OK. Uh, again, you're going to get green check mark. And then once you get that green check mark, uh, click on the CM data mark. Right? Click on that. And then enter your database name as well. There's going to be a lot of databases that are going to be created. I mean, a crap load. I think maybe five to eight databases. A lot of them. And... If you don't pay attention by default, it gives it 2,000 megabytes. So we already created, well, let me see, you got the server manager. You have the repository. You got a couple, you got a couple of them and they're already 2,000. So let me go back, go back, go back. Let's see, go back a couple of times. Go back, come on, go back. Go back, come on. One more. All right, so you got... One, two, three. Three databases already created with the server manager database that uh, you already have. So that's already four. And then four databases with 2,000 megabytes. And this is, this is a small environment. So you definitely need to increase that database to something much more. And then you have two additional ones. That's a lot. That's a lot of databases. So... It got to the point that when I was configuring my databases, I had to decrease this to a thousand because my server didn't have enough space and it was just crying out like, oh, you can't do it. You, It's failing. You can't install it. You don't have enough space. So I had to decrease the megabytes to a thousand for it to work correctly. Okay. So basically keep in mind that you're, you know, when you're installing the data warehouse, that your SQL database has enough space, okay? And once you have all that configured, then you configure your data warehouse management group. And right here, I just put BTNHD, and then you assign a management group administrator. For this one, I added my SM admins, okay? Click next on that, and then comes the reporting server for the data warehouse. Now, I had a crap load of problems with this. Crap load. And the reason why I had a lot of problems is because the reporting services, when I started, I did not install it. And then what happened was I installed it. Like, I, I started the installation of SQL Server, 
and I went back and I installed an additional feature within the database, right? Thinking that's gonna work. No, that did not work for me. So I had to, I had to do everything again and make sure reporting services was checked off when I was installing the database server features, right, on the server. That was the only way I got it to work. It was just giving me so many, so much problems. So, but here, the report server would be your database server, okay? Right, into your database server. Let me go back. Yep, yeah. into your database server. And once you enter your database server, your report server instance should be default. And this should automatically get pre populated with that report server URL that I was telling you guys to get. click on that. Make sure you click on it and make sure it takes you to a web page with no error. Okay, because I've had issues that within my uh, SQL database server. I clicked on the link and it was giving me a crap load of errors. Okay, so make sure when you click on that link to test it out within your server, it's working, you receive no errors. It's just, I think it's going to be a blank page with something, but it's no error, no red, no nothing, okay? Once you validate that, uh, you definitely need to check this off to click on next, which is stupid. Uh, check that off, click next. And then you need to give uh, your service service manager services. So whatever account you gave it when you was installing the service manager on the you know the server side, you give it that domain account. And you got to make sure you test the credentials before clicking on next. And then your reporting accounts uh, definitely have a data warehouse reporting uh, AD account. So you enter the username. Password, domain, test the credentials, and click next. So you're probably saying to yourself, like, Bernardo, man, you're using the same goddamn username. Yeah, I'm using the same username. I got lazy. Duh, it's my testing machine. It's just testing machine. But seriously, I'm not going to be using the same user account for every service. It's, it's, come on. In real, in real life, I'm not going to do that. For testing, I just want to make sure everything is working correctly. Right? So then you need to do your OLAP. For the OLAP, this is where that service is. This is where I was having this issue right here. Microsoft SQL Server 2000. So I'm saying to myself, what the hell is going on? Why I'm having this problem? Again, try and error. I didn't install this feature within my SQL Server. So I went back, installed it. I got it installed. It was working. Still the same issue. So I'm, I, I did a little research, I did a little Googling. Uh, Microsoft TechNet had a, a nice little article of certain ports that needed to be open. And the port that I needed open for the OLAP cubes uh, was, I'm going to show you right now. Ah, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? Uh, boop. So fixing this issue, go back real quick, sorry. And I can't stand 2016 office okay now the way that I fixed this issue was the following okay I had to get this up and running I didn't have this feature so you got to make sure that feature is enabled and click next I installed it I gave it the correct account name and password click next uh, it is a multi-dimensional click next install configure done close now Got to continue. Data, database server. I enter the database server, so I'm saying to myself, all right, I got this up and running. I installed it. All right, I'm good. Good thing. I, I, you know, I click the tab button to go here for it to do its thing, and the server is not available. Like, what the hell? Okay, this is a good thing because it's not, it's not stating this anymore. It's not stating this. So it basically means, okay, I installed it correctly, and it's on the server. Boom. Check mark. But this, what are you talking about? The server is not available. So the first thing in my mind is like, what are you talking about? So I open up the command prompt. I ping the server. I'm able to ping the server. I went to the server. I'm able to ping the data warehouse server. Everything is pinging. I'm able to get into it. What's going on? So the problem was you need to enable ports. This is what I was telling you guys. I found a nice little article, which I forgot to provide uh, or put it inside the Google Docs. There's uh, a couple of ports that you need to enable. One one port that's very special that you definitely need it enabled is 
port 2383. That is the one that we need uh, enabled. So I went inside my uh, service manager server and I enabled 2383 and I enabled it for domain. I went back, all right, continues. You know, I erased this. I erased this because the error was still there. Once I erased it, I typed it in, clicked on tab. This showed up, no error. I was like, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> so I clicked on next on that. Uh, again, you need to have an analytic uh, services credentials, uh, put the username, password, pick your domain. Got to uh, got to You have to test the credentials before clicking on X. Uh, then you have your diagnostics and usage data. Click on X on that. Or Microsoft updates. I did I did not use it and I unchecked this. By default, this is checked off and they recommend you to do this. So, testing lab. I don't do that. So click on X on that. Nice little summary. Click install. It's going it's going to be doing its thing. It's going to finalize and you're done. Also, with the data warehouse, they do give you the option to do the encryption backup or restore. So definitely do that um, in your environment. Click close and now SQL database. Now this is a checkup. This is what I'm talking about. This is, I just wanted to show you guys all the database that are created during the installation. So you have one, two, three. You got your repository. You got your data mark. Uh, this is your data warehouse. Uh, yeah, you got the repository your staging yeah damn there's a lot you got one two three four five six uh there's two four six eight ten gigs already and depending on how many users you're supporting you definitely in that two gig uh capacity is going to change okay so this is one of the things when you're configuring the database in the data warehouse you have to think 10 years 15 years in the long run Right, because if you keep the default, two gigs is going to go like that, depending on how core, how, you know, how much you're going to be using this service. Uh, again, uh, I think we're almost done. Let's go back. Keep on pressing the escape key. All right, we're doing we're doing good time. We do good time. Episode forty two. Great time. Episode forty three. Again, I'm going to start episode 43. I'm going to take a little 20, 30 minute break to get myself set up for you guys. And then we're going to start on the next episode. Uh, so the next thing that we need to do is add our data warehouse service manager to our uh, system center service manager. I'm really getting tired of saying service manager. So you open up your console and you have the option to register it. So click on that. You're going to get the nice little wizard. This is your wizard. Click on next. Uh, drop down. The drop down is not going to have anything. So you have to type in the data warehouse management and then test the connection. You definitely need to have the fully qualified domain name. So enter that. Test connection is connecting. Once you see that green check mark, that is always a good thing. You st I start jumping up and running around the office like a madman because I love seeing green check marks. Because uh, that's, a, that's a great feeling. So click on X on that. And from here, uh, you could create a new uh, credentials for your data warehouse. I left it as the default. Uh, but you could change it and click on X on that. And it's going to want you to enter the password. Click OK. And then uh, create. You're going to start creating. Boom, another green check mark. And data warehouse, uh, data warehouse management server is added inside our service manager server. Close it. And like I said before, uh, by default, when you open up your service manager, you're going to get this administration, uh, your library, work items, configuration items. You're not going to have the other two. Uh, it does take some time for those two things to show up. So what you could do is click on view, refresh, and eventually you're going to get this. Let me zoom in for you guys real quick. You're going to get a nice little information dialog box. The report uh, development process is in process is in progress to determine when management packs deployment is complete. See the pro, uh, procedures in the map, blah, blah, blah. Press OK. Uh, once you press OK, eventually you're going to see this. This is the first thing that pops up quickly. Uh, 
I think the reporting part took forever to show up, but it does show up. It just takes forever. It it's it's one of those things like you have to be really patient. Right? So let me get into this machine real quick for you guys. Yeah, so this is the reporting stuff right here. Again, today is all about installing and configuring it. Uh I think the only thing that I did not do with you guys is configure the self portal, the web portal portion of this. Because this is where the self portal thing is pretty cool because that that's what you can deploy to your users to submit help desk tickets. But for today, it's all about installing, configuring, get yourself up and running with the service manager as well as a data warehouse. I think uh, a future video, it might not be a, you know, a live stream. Uh, it's going to be like a future video that I'm going to push out for you guys at the channel, how to configure the self portal stuff within uh, system center service manager 2017, which I'm using right now. I think they have 1803 or 1802 or 1801. I don't know. I don't know which version they have right now in preview. But I'm definitely going to test that stuff out because I think it's the same process. The only thing is the console is a little different and you, you get more features. Uh, so let me see if anyone is. If anyone is alive, is anyone seeing me? Oh, we got a couple of people watching. I appreciate the love. Thank you for stopping by, guys. Uh <laughs> View 3D, I don't know anything about any of this, nor need to, but wanted to swing by for a few and show support. I, I appreciate the support, View 3D. Uh, we have uh, Man. Hi, Bernardo, what's up? We got Ben. What's up, Ben? How you doing? Uh, everything, is, everything is good, man. Extremely busy. Really, 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 really busy. Jason Morris says, good job, man. Keep it up. Enjoy the videos. Very education and informative. I appreciate it. Thank you for support. Uh, we have LG. Good evening, all. Have you used the... Uh... No, I have not used that yet. I have not used that yet. So, this is what... Uh... LG was just mentioned the advanced remote support tools and support teams and administration. I have not used this yet. This looks pretty interesting. Nice. Is this the same? Is this somewhat a competitor for service service manager? It looks like a competitor for it. Upgrade to or is this a is this a competitor or this is like a module or add-on? Looks pretty interesting. I definitely need to take a look at this. This is pretty cool. So I'm going to put this into the Google Docs because this I find this interesting. I find that pretty interesting. I'll probably do a little research on that and see what that is. I don't know. It's something new. I love learning new things. That sounds pretty cool. Probably something that you might have to pay, like always. All right, cool. All right, guys. So I'm going to end it right here. It is 8.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, episode 42. It's all about the step-by-step -step installation configuration of the System Center Service Manager 2016 I am going to hopefully, I don't know if tonight or tomorrow morning, I'm going to be posting up the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is free. You guys don't need to pay anything. This is free technology for you guys. Uh, once the PowerPoint, once you got, you know, once you get the PowerPoint, make a copy of it, come back, watch the video. You could grab, take notes, do whatever you need to do. That's the whole point of the PowerPoint. So you guys could grab, take notes, and modify it the way that. You know, it's going to fit your environment. But I'm going to end it right here because I'm going to take about a 45-minute break. And then I will say hopefully around 9.30. Let's say 9.30, I'm going to start the server room episode 43, which is going to be all about uh, SCCM. Uh, I have version 18.02 already installed. And I'm going to show you guys how to import 
create a task sequence, and deploy our favorite operating system, Windows 10, with the latest build, which is 18.03. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and that's it, guys. So hopefully you guys stop by around 9.30. Again, I'm going to start the second stream around 9.30. And thank you for, for everyone joining for this live stream. And I catch you guys on the next one. All right, like always, how in the heck do I end this stream? All right, how do I end this stream? All right, do I end it? Mm. Right, how you end it? Oh, oh, I think I ended this way. <laughs>